assignments you can choose next time. <laughs> Is it Peter Lawford? No. With the gray hair, the white hair. Peter, uh, Peter Graves, wasn't it? Yeah, Peter Graves. That's the real Mission Impossible right there back in the day. People look at me going, what's that? Honestly, it's, it, if, you, if you do watch TV, you have to watch things like pre-1995 before, or 90. Before you just see the influx of lesbianism and just flat out, I mean, not the TV's ever any good, but I mean, at least it was a lot cleaner than it is now. It's just not, yeah, there's nothing, not a lot of redeeming qualities on man at all, so. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, man, there, I mean, honestly, books and all that stuff, just, yeah. Good morning, Kenny. Good morning. Kenny's in the house, say, yo. All right, a couple things to, well, one thing to clean up. I mentioned last week, I think I probably, during the preaching, I mentioned something about, uh, or probably Sunday morning uh, during Sunday school that Hell's mentioned, I think I said like 70 times, or what, what did I say? Do you guys remember? It's actually, I, it bothered me. So I, I knew it wasn't 80 times. It was 54. It's 33 in the old and 21 in the new. I had to go back to Deuteronomy to look that up. So Cause that's where I have all the Old Testament. Not that you were paying attention, but I don't want, I don't want it. What's that? You know what? You should check me. And I want to check myself. That's why churches have run amok. Because a preacher can say whatever he wants and people are going, oh, that's awesome. Okay. What's the book say, man? All right. We're another happy time in Sunday school. Here we go. First Peter chapter three. Just trying. First Peter chapter three. I want to put a little bow on uh, uh, the baptisms that we looked at, and then we will move on to music. With a K in the King James Bible, by the way. If you have a good, proper, heavenly given King James Bible, you have a K. People say, why do you have Ks at the end of music and heretic and lunatic and all that? Because a C could be pronounced as what other letter in the alphabet? An S. So if you, sometimes you put an E at the end of it, right? Nice, which I'm not, you know, things like that. So what the King James translators did and the way English was rigged up 400 years ago, and in particular 1769, you put a K at the end of the C to make sure you knew that C was a hard sound. So it, it, it's right in the Cambridge authorized version. <laughs> and Cambridge is the one that puts a whirlpool for a Leviathan. They got everything else right and they put whirlpool in the middle. Of all the notes, they don't put any notes. They put Bible references. And they put one note, or a whirlpool. I'm like, seriously, what are you doing, guys? But anyway, hell is 54 times in the King James Bible, 33 in the Old, and 21 in the New. The Bible says this in 1 Peter chapter number 3. I'm sure there's other mistakes that I need to make up for. Ask John corrected me on Wednesday night, but we'll talk about that in private later. So, <laughs> 1 Peter 3, 14 says this, and but, if ye, uh, but and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. So you have a good con conscience in verse 16. You have a good conscience conversation. That's not just speech. We know that the way the, the Bible defines that. It's your whole manner of life, the way you conduct yourself along with your speech. Verse 17 says this, For it's better if the will of God be so, that you suffer for well-doing, than for evil-doing. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust. They might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. So when the Lord died, his body went to the ground, Joseph of Arimathea's tomb. His spirit went back to the Father. His soul went down to the center of the earth. He went to hell first. He crossed the gulf. He met the thief in paradise. Ties off with every Bible verse that you have in the New Testament, describing that, plus some other things in the Old Testament. No discrepancy whatsoever. The Bible says this in verse number 20. It defines the spirits which sometime were disobedient when once the long-suffering God weighed in the days of Noah, while the ark was a-preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls are saved by water. The, now watch. They, 
they were saved by water because obviously in the ark, the water picks them up. They go above uh, the judgment based on the judgment of God, the, the rain for 40 days and 40 nights. But look at what he says in verse 21 about baptism. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, watch, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a what? A good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So I'm not changing the word of God, but read this the way the parentheses are put in there. The Bible says this, the like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You're not saved by baptism in this day and age. You're saved by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But what did he put in there about baptism? What is baptism supposed to be ultimately? The answer of a what? Towards who? Why? Because it shows your conversation that God saved you through the resurrection of his son. That's why we have water baptisms in immersion. It is the outward showing of what you did when you trusted the Lord as your savior. It's the answer of a good conscience towards God. It has no efficacy. You're not going to come up out of the water when we dunk you and raise you up. We had five baptisms, what, back in May of 2021 from some folks that had gotten saved. And we baptized them. The, the heavens didn't open. The tub didn't split. It wasn't, you know, the, Moses didn't come down with the Ten Commandments again. None of that stuff happened. They got wet. But what was it? It's the answer of a good conscience before God and toward God. Why? They trusted the resurrection of Jesus Christ for the saving of their soul. That's what baptism does now. Uh, people say they come out of the baptism and feel all tingly. That's probably because the pH of the alkalinity was a little off in the tub. Yeah. Or somebody put an electric eel in there, one of the two. I mean, that's just, it, it's just weird, man. It's just weird. The Bible says this in verse number uh, 22, who is gone to heaven, is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. So I didn't run all those verses. Uh, we, we touched on them. We, we talked about them for many, many weeks. But when you trust the Lord, when you trust the gospel, when you get saved, you get converted to Christ, the first thing that you should do is get baptized. Uh, if you don't get baptized after salvation, how can you be taught anything else? It's the first answer and the first step of obedience regarding a good conscience towards God. You should get baptized, but not because it does anything for you. It's your testimony that you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior as the payment for your sins. If you never got baptized, you'd still go home to glory because it's the blood that cleanses us from all sin, not the water. But the water is just the testimony. It's the, it's the answer of a good conscience for God. You need to know that. You need to know that, man. Uh, I was baptized as an infant. didn't do anything for me. No power, no, didn't wash away anything, man. <laughs> didn't even know what was going on, man. Had people stand up and answering questions that, uh, I don't know if I'd renounce Satan. I don't know if I'd follow God all my life. You think about the questions the priest asked and the godparents stand up and ask for it. I mean, if you're familiar with the Godfather scene, you know he was at the baptism so he couldn't have killed all those guys. But he did settle all family business that day. Right, Guido? Okay. All right. Doctrinal statement number 13. Ooh. I'm going to read the statement, and then we'll, we'll get into it for the next week or so, or however long the Lord would have us to do it. Uh, I would say this before we get into it. Music is huge. If you don't think music is huge, go into a Walmart or a Target or any other place. God knows why you'd go to the lowest hell. But if you go in any of those places, and if you go this time of year, it is the lowest. It is the lowest hell, man. But if you go into any of those places, they play certain music, you know, whether it's, you know, we always complain about elevator music. I would, I, I'd rather have elevator, elevator music than ACDC playing. Yeah. Or what's even worse is some of that slow, quote-unquote, light rock. Yeah. You know, that's how you dress it up. Well, it's light, easy listening. That stuff is just as perverse and as satanic as the stuff where the guy's up there biting a bat's head off. Yeah. But we just think, you know, well, it's, it's just music, man. If you don't think it has an influence, if you're saved... Hear that music and watch how that thing snaps right back in your heart and your mind in no time. Toe starts moving, man. Words come to heart and mind. Brother Steve, you're freaking out right now. You just want to start jamming with Ozzy Osbourne, don't you, man? <laughs> it's very influential. 
Uh, it, uh, I, I don't know if it was Spurgeon that said this, uh, Charles Spurgeon that said this, but um, singing is the, uh, the match meet or the, the foyer to the preaching. Music, good godly music, can set the tone for the preaching of the Word of God. And music shouldn't just be taken lightly. I just don't want to sing three songs or two songs or whatever and just get, in there, just get into it. Music is, is, is important, man. And I'm not going to get into syncopation and beats and all that stuff. You can lose your mind tracking that down and the certain bar and the key. And I, but I will say this. You need to be careful of where music originated with and who God gave it to and who that creature is now. And if you know anything about the modern movement of our churches, you know music is the primary driver for attracting people in, <laughs> besides rock-hard canoe cookies. <laughs> You know what those are, Brother Bernie. You couldn't. There, we'll, we'll talk. I'll tell you later. Yeah. But yeah, but I mean, you know, the, the, now, now listen, man. Whatever you want to do in your church, just go ahead and do it, man. But you know, to break up the you know, the preaching with that foolishness and all that stuff. There's a certain flow of the Spirit of God kind of works into a service, and you, like Ezekiel, want to get in the flow of the river. You don't want to get up there and be the guy that sows discord. You know, everything's being played, nice melody and harmony, and all of a sudden you get there and preach on, you know, uh, 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 hemlines and haircuts. And then the Spirit of God goes, I'm out. Now, I, I know he doesn't leave us as believers, I understand. But you can kind of feel when God's moving in, your, in the service, and then all of a sudden just the, the clang, and it leaves. Well, what they do is you interrupt the service with that stuff, but also I'll tell you another thing, bad music can just ruin the service, man you can get hyped up the wrong way through music. And if, if any of you, and I wouldn't really recommend this, uh, if you'd like to do this, that, that's your call. I'm not going to tell you what to do in this regard, but you should take five or ten minutes, if you can make it, and watch this nonsense called Hillsong. Does anybody know what Hillsong is? Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's the, whole, the whole thing. Well, Hillsong is this movement that started out of Australia, and they, I don't care if they got in trouble. I saw something where they got in trouble, and, uh, and of course they always published the preacher getting in trouble. They never preach about people getting converted to Christ. But that's beside the point. But this Hillsong thing started, I believe, in Australia, and they have a Hillsong in like L.A. and a Hillsong in New York, and they're all, I mean, they're all over the place. And it's literally, if you watch it, if you didn't know any better, if you just turned it on and watched it for a second, you'd think you were watching Rush or Hall and Oates or something like that. I mean, dark, dark amphitheater stadium, people with glow sticks. And people on stage, you know, just dress as they want to dress. And, you know, the cool, you know, the cool guy, $250 jeans that are ripped. I'll do that for you for nothing. With dull, rusty scissors, just to make a point. But you get, and I, I mean, if you watch this stuff, you'll be like, I feel like I'm watching Pink Floyd from the 70s, man. It's trippy, man. And they're up there just strumming away, and it's real melodic and real. That'll get you tripping out of the frame, bro. Oh, yeah, it will, man. That's not meditative. That's repetitious nonsense where you sing the same phrase literally 15 and 20 times over and over again. You got I mean, I'm not encouraging you to do it, but you ought to know what other people believe just to get an idea of, I'm not just the mean, narrow-minded, I'm not just a regular guy. That, <laughs> we preach the book. We try to state it the way it is. I can't see David out there hopping along with his shirt pulled out and a mic around his neck and just going busy saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm like, I get, that wigs me out, man. There's a spirit around that, and it's not the Holy Spirit. Now, I will say this as we get into this too, and you've heard me say it many times before, I don't believe electric guitars in and of themselves are dangerous. I don't believe drums are dangerous. But the heart of man that leads to the hands of man, which leads to the eyes of man, which leads to the mind of man, that's what controls what comes off that drum or that electric guitar. I've heard people preach before, well, if you pluck electricity and do it, okay, I get it, the Prince of the I'm, I'm with you, man. But come on, man, you can play the piano in the flesh. You can play the harp in the flesh. And you'd say, well, those are godly instruments. Electric guitar is not. Well, well, be careful, man. It all comes back down to the heart of man. Music is huge, man. It's, it, it's a huge thing. In fact, it's so huge that God gave it to the most beautiful thing, the be, uh, most beautiful creature ever created. So let me read this. 
and then we'll get into it. Go to, go to Ephesians 5 while I'm reading this. But I, I, do want, I do want to read the statement. It is statement 13. It's not order 66, Taylor, but it is statement 13. We believe in the biblical practice of singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs that teach and admonish us as believers, both individually and corporately as a congregation. We are to sing these psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with biblical understanding of what we are singing. Our singing and music, with a K, will not be contemporary or worldly in any fashion as to bring attention or glory to our flesh and not to God. That's how you can break this down. Is that music appealing to my flesh? Or is it appealing to my flesh being put down and the exaltation of Jesus Christ? Uh, I find it very hard myself when I sing songs about what can wash away my sin, nothing but the blood. I find it hard to get exalted. Uh, we sang one on Wednesday night. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How do you get exalted during that unless you're just a complete carnal jerk? So we try to sing songs that do have uh, teaching and admonishment in them and, and help and encouragement, man. It, it, it's a huge thing, man. Uh, that's why they're going after the music. Uh, the music typically changes, then the Bible changes. Typically, from my experience, and if you guys have been involved in ministry, you've ministered, you know that typically is the first thing that gets kind of, it gets off half a bubble. And then the Bible gets off a half a bubble. And then the Greek comes in. And then... Well, let's, to, uh, uh, Dr. Ruckman does something great on, it's a message from the 80s, and I think it's the, uh, it's on the whole armor of God, and he does this thing about the way the world thinks, and then he does it, and he goes, now let me tell you how Christian education is, and he starts out with, we believe the King James Bible is inspired in the word of God, we believe hell is real, and all this stuff, and then by the time he gets down, he goes, we don't know, your opinion is as good as another, and then he goes, that's Christian education. And he gives like seven or eight things just that, while he's drawn, and the crowd just goes, sits there and goes. Point being, it starts with one little thing, and it's usually the music. And then before you know it, you're, ah, who cares, man? Dress as you are, come as you are, be as you are. And music, it, it, it's huge, man. So I believe we ought to sing the right songs. Um, I don't have any problem with songs that are, quote, unquote, not in the hymn book. That would fall underneath spiritual songs but they should have some Bible basis as their foundation. Without, without a question, man. Look what the Bible says to me. Um, Brother Bert, if you could, I know we've been here, as we like to say, a gajillion times, whatever a gajillion is, but could you please read 14 through 21 and then pray for us, Brother Bert, if you could. Wherefore he said, Wake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, Amen. redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, Amen. speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Amen. Heavenly Father, great to be with uh, Brother Dave to bring some Sunday school lesson today and also the message afterwards. But uh, particularly this, Lord, it, it's a very, um, it can be a great thing, great tool that helps us in our Christian walk. Yeah, amen. Well, way to, to praise you and learn about you and teach you and exalt you um, but it's a it's a subtle thing and um, it seems to be more easy than most or all areas to get defensive about for us to go by what we like rather than what you say and we're um, for whatever reason, Lord, we seem to be more deceived by it because of how it affects us and what we like and what we don't like. So I pray that we would just look at what you Amen. say about it. And people say the Bible is controversial, it has a lot of controversial things in it, Lord, but basically once we know what you 
say, that's really the controversy. And I pray we would look at music that way. And uh, also we need to rely on musicians to tell us what's right and wrong rather than just what set the Lord. I pray that we would look at it that way. Amen. And uh, help our, not just our minds, but our, more importantly, our hearts be open uh, to what you have for us this morning. Amen. You guys good with the yes or no? You good now? Someone want to shut it down? All right. I want to take you here. We're starting these. You can find these in our doctrinal statement. Uh, I'm not promoting the doctrinal statement, but there's a lot of verses in this doctrinal statement that will help you in your own personal Bible study. But it's, it's a good tool to, uh, to go through for your, for your own personal edification and, and growth. But I want to put this one here <laughs> regarding music as we start out, is that isn't it interesting, he says, be not drunk with wine, where is excess, but then what does he say next? But be filled with the who. And what does he attach, because there's no period after spirit, what's he attached with the spirit? <coughs> singing. Spe and where does that singing in this particular passage come, where does it emanate from? Speaking to yourselves. I'm doing this for a reason, because the Bible will, will bear this out as we go to Colossians in a minute, is that it's good to have these psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs in your heart and in your mind, it goes along with the washing of water by the Word of God. I, you know what? There are times where I don't just play the Bible in my car. I play music that I like that I gravitate to. It do, there's a reason why, we'll, we'll look into this, I'm just quoting it now, but over in 1 Samuel 16, when, uh, when King Saul is taken over by an evil spirit, how does that evil spirit leave him? Get to the sweet psalmist of Israel gets up and plays the harp. Uh, I'm not saying, no, no, I'm talking about some weird exorcism here, like holy water, you know, you take out your favorite CD and splash it at the devil and it leaves you, or nothing like that, getting all crazy. I'm just simply saying is that music, does, good music has a way of lifting the spirits away, and you say, well, what well, you just had a verse right there, it says, be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but you filled with the spirit, capital S. That tells me, what does wine typically do when you get drunk? It puts you under the influence of another what? There you go. So as a child of God with the Spirit of God inside me, it's good to have the psalms and hymns and spiritual songs locked away in my heart and my mind so I can sing those while I'm going through my daily walk. Uh, let's, let's face it, you're not going to pray 24-7. You're not going to read your Bible 24-7. That's just the way it is. I'm not coming down on you. That's just the reality of, of life and, and we work jobs and all that stuff. It's just the way, the way it works. But you know what you usually have? you got the Word of God hidden in your heart and that's a wonderful thing and you should do that. There's no question about it. But you know what? Having some good songs locked away that you can sing to yourself through the power of the Spirit of God throughout the day, that'll help you too with your walk. I don't know about you. I struggle with my thought life. And the more of the positive things from the Word of God and the Spirit of God I can get in there to flush that junk out, to overcome and deal with that stuff, the better off I am. So it's good to know the hymns. I'm kind of ashamed on Wednesday night when I don't know some of those hymns, but some of those hymns you're pulling out, are, I don't, God doesn't know them. He doesn't... He, he, he doesn't he, I'm just saying, God doesn't even know. He's like, what's she picking this Wednesday night anyway? <laughs> we'll talk about that judgment seat there. But uh, I, I'm ashamed not to know because the more of those you have, it does help you in your life. I like singing those songs, you know, there's within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. It sure beats running with the devil from Van Halen. Isn't that weird how they pick songs like that? I'm running with the devil. No, I'm supposed to walk in the spirit. But you see, if you've listened to that, or if you've been exposed to that, that stuff does play, like I mentioned earlier, you go to a, you go to a store or whatever, my, my car, uh, that music plays, it kind of just, if you wonder how powerful, it just clicks right in, and you haven't listened to that in 10, 20, 30 years, and bingo, it's right back on you. Uh, my, my chiropractor down the street, he's on the prayer list, uh, Sean Noel, so of course this time of year I said, are you the oldest? He goes, yes, I'm the oldest. He said, so you're the first Noel. So I was messing with him, you know, give him a hard time. I said, other than that, I hate Christmas, but I'm doing it because we're having a good time. And he's cracking my back and got my neck in his hands. I'm like, yeah, but he ain't moving this neck unless I bow up and get off. But anyway, so Sean, we talked, thank you, Ken, that's right, bud. We had a good time in the street yesterday, that's right. I'll get you back in the pocket. Polly wants to be over. So anyway, uh, Sean, brother Sean, uh, not brother Sean, I say, he says, Sean Noel, he's a, he's a chiropractor, and he plays rock, I don't know what it's called, I just hear it when I'm sitting there, the whale. Yeah. The, Kenny, you're giving away a lot of stuff on tape, man. No. It's on other stuff, and they say the whale, and then we go to The whale, I think, is, I, I saw, it's, it's, the, it's the classic rock station down here, I believe. So they have a whale, when my first thought is Leviathan, and of course they name it the whale, and I'm like, oh, here we go. 
But I'll be just sitting there. I'm not thinking. I'm actually trying to pray. Lord, would you give me another opportunity to talk to, to Sean and talk to him? Talk to his receptionist, Nicole, and talk, you know, and, I'm, and then all of a sudden, Steely Dan comes on. Now, if you don't know who Steely Dan is, thank God you don't. And I'm like, and then, and essentially, you just, you're not even, you're not, I'm not saying like I'm some weak kneed Christian. I'm not trying to say that. But it just, it's just all of a sudden it comes in your ear and you're like, flashback. That's bizarre, man. While you're praying, it comes right to your heart and your mind after just hearing a couple words of it. Oh, yeah, man. So it's good to have stuff in there that flushes that other stuff out. Uh, there's a guy in our in our uh, in our, our our plant building two, the MRO side, maintenance repair and overhaul side. I'll go down and um, actually he's moved on to building one. But Dave Jurest, talked to him, lost guy, talked to him, but he has a radio next to his thing. They let us have radios, and he'll play on the radio. And I'll walk by, and here comes something from Leonard Skinner. <laughs> I haven't listened to that stuff since last week, and it came down. And it, <laughs> Hey, I'm like, you know, you know, it, it, you walk by, I'm like, I hate you for putting that on there. But you can't say that to him. He has no idea the battle you're going through. But it's the music that kicks up. And folks, if you don't think music has power to it, that's why God said, you know what the, you know what the opposite of being drunk with wine is, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Part of the Spirit of God working in you is those songs and those hymns and those psalms. Uh, we do sing the psalms. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of His holiness. That's a good way to memorize Scripture, Psalm 40, 48. And you memorize certain ones like that, and it, yeah, man, that, that's how you battle what's going on. If you don't know what I'm talking about right now, I don't know what life you're living, man, because you're in a battle, man. It's a battle for your mind and the control of how you're going to walk today. And music is part of that. And if you've had that in your life before, man, I, I, listen, uh, Brother Burton, I've talked about this before. Karen Carpenter had one of the greatest voices probably God ever gave to a human being on this earth. She died an anorexic, lonely, sad individual. Don't know if she saved or lost. I'm not going to make that call because I don't know her heart. But all she sang about was rainy days and Mondays and all this stuff. And I'm, I'm not trying to conjure this up in your head, in your, but if you don't know who the Carpenters are, good for you. Well, that's easy listening. No, that stuff is melancholy and bluesy and low, and that takes you down here, man. It's bizarre. And you say, well, that's good music. No, she died probably, probably lost, miserable, anorexic, just completely consumed by depression. Well, she's a great singer. Yeah, 100% she's a great singer. But where is she in eternity now? But I'm saying, even if you hear something light, what they call light music, that stuff will pull you down, boy. Real quick. Go ahead, sir. My favorite example is Barry Manilow. <laughs> yeah, I'll, get, get, I'll write this. Yeah. I write the songs that make the whole world sing. We, yeah, we looked at that in uh, Proverbs. Yeah, that's right, a few weeks ago. I write the songs that make the whole world sing. No, I know who writes the, whole, the songs that make the whole world sing. <laughs> His name is uh, Satan. So anyway, this is, this is to yourself personally. Go to Colossians 3. I know a lot of you know these, these verses, but it's good for you. Music is powerful, boy. It is, it's a hook, too. Uh, I remember when God began to delve. I'll tell you, how, tell you how wild this is, and it'll probably come up in Sunday. Well, maybe, hopefully it won't come up in Sunday. I'll get it out of the way now. But um, I remember going to church for the first time out in Rochester with my, with my brother Mark and visiting there. And that's a, that was a big church at the time. It was big. It was 1,000 plus, easy. Uh, and Brother Steve, you've been out there. You've been out there. It's, it's, it's big. And putting away all those folding chairs and putting it on the stage, that's like the ninth seal of the tribulation period. That was just horrible. <laughs> Pull out the things, fold them out, clang, 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 put them up. Come on, man. Buy a building, George. Seriously. No, I think they did. But anyway, I can remember when I started first going to uh, living the life that God saved me to, uh, and going to church. I can remember first time hearing people sing. I wasn't singing. You know what I'm talking about, man. It's weird. Kenny, you know what I'm talking about? You're like, these people are singing like really loud, and they're singing about Jesus, and this is kind of weird. Man. <laughs> and you're saved with the Spirit of God inside you. But you realize, wow, it's just, this, is, this is pretty... Funny. But then you start thinking, wow... I know what that Bible says. I know how great my Savior is. The least I can do is open my mouth for him. And think of all the songs I sung for the devil. Think of all the music and money I spent on the devil's stuff. 
Yeah, man. But you're, you're embarrassed. When you first start and you hear other people saying it, kind of, it does, it kind of freaks you out. The first time you come on the street and hear me street preach, you'll probably go, whoa, like this. And then you'll get used to it and you'll be like, yeah, it's just him, man. <laughs> but I mean, you, when you hear people start singing, it's, it, it's kind of, it's, it's weird, man. But then you realize how important it is because that is, that's a battleground, man. Yeah. It really is. Uh, I had, I had several suitcases. I think the girls and I told my, my kids this one time. I had several suitcases. I told you folks, I think, probably. I had several suitcases, you know, those little attache cases full of cassettes. You know, you buy the, you know what a cassette is? Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know what a dial phone is on the wall? You guys are like, what? It's, it's in, yeah, it's in the Smithsonian, man, next to Archie Bunker's uh, uh, seat, or his chair. Well, anyway, I, I had suitcases of cassettes, and I had them all, man. I mean, yes, ACD, all that foolishness. I mean, just all the way, from, and all, it had to be alphabetized, because I'm psychotic. <laughs> you know, Aerosmith, ACD, you had to have them in order, the police, you know, you two, you, you had them have them in order, man. So I, I remember having cases of those, uh, those, those cassette tapes, um, and just God said, you know what, that's got to go, man. Yeah. <laughs> Did you give them away to somebody else? That'd be like giving heroin away. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, it, it is probably wor just as bad, if not worse. I took him down to the Connecticut River, and I did. I probably killed some baby seals up in Greenland or some stupid thing. <laughs> or I cho choked a, a, a dump duck down at Bondi's Island. But I, I opened that thing up, and they were all stuck in their holder, and I launched those like Al Order from the 1976 Olympics right into the river off the edge. Nobody's getting those things. Not happening, man, because of the pull it has on you. It, honestly, you don't, you're, not, you're sitting there, you're going to look at me all crazy and all that stuff. This is so huge. Like I said, this is what is influencing your churches now. This is the lure to get, come in, we have contemporary music. We don't sing those old stodgy hymns with just a piano and an organ. We have contemporary music. Any Bible behind that, or just you want to lure people in? <laughs> it's huge, man. Music's huge. Music with a K, by the way. Colossians chapter number three. Where are we at? Brother Kenny, you in the house, man? All right, here we go. Uh, if you could, Brother Kenny, and I, it's, it's a little bit. Can you go nine, please? Nine through 17 of Colossians three. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Amen. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all. Amen. And in all. But on therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. Forbearing one another, Amen. And forgiving one another. Amen. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, also so also do ye. And above all things, put on charity, which is the Amen. bond of per Amen. perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, Amen. And hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Amen. And whatsoever ye do in the word, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. There's a lot more than just reading that, man. There's a lot in there. It's very good. Now, Colossians, the epistle of the Colossians, is the closest thing you have to an epistle to Laodicea. Now, I know we don't have the epistle from Laodicea to Laodicea. We don't, we don't have that, and I'm not changing the title of the book of Colossians whatsoever. But Laodiceans is mentioned five or six times in the King James Bible. It's mentioned in Revelation 3, and it's mentioned right here. So what is going on in Colossae in the surrounding area, and in, in, uh, I, I believe uh, uh, Laodicea is part of Phrygia Pacatiana over in that area, not Estiana up in uh, Colombia, but Pacatiana, <laughs> that's where, uh, that's where uh, Laodicea is, it's that region. 
you're going to notice that this letter is written, but what's the emphasis is that let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. So it's the Spirit of God over in Ephesians 5. Then it's the word of Christ. And then he says, do what? To yourselves. Now it's congregational. You know what we sing? It's to admonish and to give thanks to the Lord in the presence of one another as believers in Christ. And it's based on the Spirit of God in Ephesians 5. That's singularly, but also companion with over the congregation to the Word of Christ. We want to sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs that are linked and matched up to the Word of God. I know we kid each other about some of the stuff about streets of gold and all that stuff, and highest archangels, plural, there's only one archangel. And I know sometimes I might be a, a little psychotic on that, but I, I wouldn't want to take the hymn book. I think Brother Burke prayed it. And we said, I don't want to take the hymn book over the King James Bible. The, King, the hymn book does not trump, trump the King James Bible. And so you want to be careful that we sing the, the songs that have the proper doctrine, the proper spirit of God behind them, and the word of Christ in them, and that when we do it together as a congregation, we do it properly. Why? Giving thanks to the Lord. That's what the song service is for. It's to prepare your hearts, to admonish you. I mean, there's some songs in there. Uh, I, from all, I've torn all the idols out of my heart. Really? All of them. You, read, you sing some of those songs like, I'm, you don't want to sing it, man. But it's meant to admonish you because it matches up with the Word of God, which causes you to examine yourself, how is my walk with the Lord today? And this one is congregational or gathering versus the other one being personal. But they both work together. Spirit of God, Word of Christ. That's what's behind the Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. You don't want to sing something that's so, so goofy and weirded out that uh, you know what my favorite song is. It's shine, Jesus shine. <laughs> of course, they don't know Psalm 80 and, you know, number 6 and all the places where it actually is an appearance before the second coming and all that to get the nation of Israel 144,000 before they go up to, you know, endure to the end and all that. So it's, they don't have any idea what that is. And he shines between the cherubims, which is the ark and all that stuff when it's actually going to be on the earth in the millennial kingdom. They don't teach any of that. It's just, and they keep singing it over and over again. You know what they're trying to do? They're trying to drum up your spirit and try to get... It's almost like you're at a football game. Roll, tide, roll. Or what's the one Florida State does? Whether it's... Oh, 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 and they do the... Try. And you have 80,000 people singing the same thing. That's what these song services turn into when it's yeah. like praise and worship and you say the same thing 15, 20 times in a row. Shine, Jesus, shine. What's that? What's that? I'm sorry. That, that's my point, is it becomes like, mm, 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 mm. Yeah. no, I want to sing something that has a Bible base to it, that the Spirit of God is behind it, that prepares me for the preaching of the Word of God. Right. I don't still want to sing to sing, man. And singing shouldn't be a show either. Yeah. It should be just, you know what, I don't, you know, it's good. it was good to get the guys up here that day. Yeah. I mean, I mean, honestly, we can't carry a tune in a bucket with a handle. But who cares? You think God heard it like that? God's probably pleased that a bunch of men got up and started speaking up for his Savior and for him. It's a good thing, man. This weird, repetitious nonsense. It is like a mantra. It's like this, you know, just droning on. I'm like, come on, man. Shine Jesus. There, there's a bunch of them, man. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you this. We were, uh, and I, I've said it before, and I, I'm not being repetitious for the sake of being repetitious, but you forgot what you had for breakfast. So uh, we were singing Psalm 51 one time, and first, uh, I won't name the church. It was up in Massachusetts, in East Lyme Metal, yeah. on Parker Street. The, um, <laughs> but anyway, we were singing Psalm 51 one day. Well, four of us weren't. It would be Taylor, Haley, and myself. Karen was singing it. The, no, <laughs> it was, it was uh, Karen, Karen, Taylor, Haley, and myself singing Psalm 51. Now, I'm not going to turn to Psalm 51, but cast not the Holy Spirit, uh, take not the Holy Spirit from me. That was in the, that was in the 5111 was in the song. Why would you as a New Testament believer be singing and imploring and asking God not to take the Holy Spirit from you in song? When you have how many verses on it in the New Testament that you're sealed into the day of redemption by his temple of the Holy Ghost, and you have the earnest expectation in you, and just keep on going on. And you're, I went up to the song leader afterwards, and I said, we, we shouldn't be singing that song. He goes, well, I checked with the pastor, and he said it was okay. 
Now, see, now I'm a rebel, and I'm, you know, I'm Dathan Corn and Byram, the, you know, the Earth's going to open up and swallow up uh, Taylor Haley and, and Karen well, Haley, especially. But I mean, <laughs> going to swallow us up and kill us. No, that's wrong. Because the Bible says it's wrong. Now, there's a way to go do it and handle it. And I'll, you're going to laugh, but I handled that stuff quietly, one on one. I didn't go yell at him and bring a big show up there. I knew how to handle it. If I had a problem, I wouldn't talk to the head guy. Until I got called in front of four or five of the guys who tried to ambush me, man. That seems to be like the thing. They try to ambush me. Now, do you want, the, do you want to hunt the bear or do you want the bear hunting you? That's just you got to pick your choice, man. Sometimes you get the bull. Sometimes you get the horns. So you get into this. I'm like, why are we singing this, man? Well, it's good. You know, it's not biblical. The Spirit of God and the Word of God don't line up with what you're singing. You know, uh, um, what's the song we sing? Oh, this, one, this one's a tough one, man. Ye chosen seed of Israel's race, ye ran. That's a hard one, man, because you ain't the chosen seed of Israel's race, man. <laughs> That's one of the mysteries we're going through on Wednesday night. You're a child of God. And it's hard because you don't want to be over analytical and be a jerk about it, and you want to have room in there, but you can't. I, I try not to break the word of God, man, because that's what I got to answer to. I'm not going to answer to a hymn book. Yeah, man. Fun times in the old ball yard tonight. Give me two more, and we're, we're good. Go to Psalm 47, please. You know what's really cool? Your Bible's biggest book is a book of songs. Isn't that cool? So it tells you how, it tells you how important. Uh, how important, excuse me, song and singing is to the Lord. I'm not going to go there, but do you remember in Chronicles 20 or 21 where he puts the uh, musicians out in front? We've looked at that a couple times. He puts the musicians out in front. <laughs> he puts the band in front of the football team. <laughs> Sorry, man, I played a trumpet. I, I, play, I, I played an instrument, but, you know, was it going to play an instrument, be in band, or play on the field? Take your pick, man. But that's what God did. God said, let me put the tuba player out front, the big drum guy, <laughs> and the little, nee, 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 nee. let me put him out front and let me show you how the battle's really mine and not yours. So God can use that stuff, man. It's, uh, it's, it's really cool. <laughs> the Lord does that, man. You guys aren't laughing. You must be soccer players. All right, Psalm 47. <laughs> Brother. Sorry, Jennifer, you're staring at me right now. I'm burning. You're, burn you're burning a hole in my gel. My gel's on fire. Brother Paul. Psalm 47, if you could, please. Yeah. I need you to read. This is going to be a big challenge. Can you read the whole thing? Oh, man, I'm going to struggle. This is going to be struggling, man. Yeah. To the chief musician of the psalm, please come before him. So clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto to God with the voice of Zion, uh, triumph. For the Lord both high is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. Yeah, man. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. So who's the us and the hour? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For God is the king of all the earth. Look at this. Sing ye praises with understanding. There you go. God reigneth over the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shield of the earth belongs unto God. He is greatly exalted. Thank you. Verse 7 says, for, the, for God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. You ought to know what you're singing. You should have an understanding of what you're singing. 100%. I know it's Old Testament. We're going to go to the last reference in the New Testament to, to back that up. You should understand what you're singing. What's the context of this whole thing? It's second coming. He's going to put the Gentiles, the heathen, underneath the feet of his, his nation, Israel. But he says, sing praises unto our what? Our king. What are you doing when you sing praises in the congregation? You're singing, you're singing praises to who? Your king. He's your king. He's your Lord. Are you not a priest and a king? Revelation 1. Well, he's the king of kings and lord of lords, man. So though that is the king of Israel, I understand that. It's a physical dominion, the millennial kingdom. When you sing praises personally and corporately, you're supposed to sing them with understanding to your king. Don't just sing this, you know, well, this has a nice melody to it. What do the words actually have to do along with the music? It's huge. Now, some people will say, well, um, uh, you know, well, 
we have these words, okay, the music might be off, but the words are okay. No, it's, it has to be a combo of the two, man. It has to be a combo of the two. Uh, we're not going to look at this more, but you look at Cora and all those guys, C-O-R-A-H, and all the musicians, Asaph. You know what those guys did for the priesthood and all that stuff in Chronicles? That's what they did. They're recorders and musicians and all that for King David. Go with me over to 1 Corinthians 14, and we'll close with this. Brother Steve, get 1 Corinthians 14, please. 1 Corinthians 14, I know you guys have this one probably. Kenny's showing us, you know, saying, I know where this is right now. I have this. You want to learn the Bible, you come to me, woman. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Look what the Bible says. 14, uh, Brother Steve, you could. Oh, man. Can you get 10, please, through... 16, just for now, with particular emphasis on the end of verse 15 with what you just read in 47 of Psalms. There are, and may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Right. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh of the variant, and he that speaketh shall be of the variant unto me. Mm hmm. Look at this. I will sing with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. I will sing with the understanding also. Else when I shall bless with the Spirit, I shall need to occupy the room of the unlearned and say amen. But thy giving of thanks seems to understand it. Not without faith. Go to read verse 32, Brother Steve, before you sit down, please. Same, cha same chapter, verse 32, please. The spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Okay. Did you see any capital S in that passage? You won't find it in the whole chapter. So don't tell me the music just overwhelming. You have no control over what's going on. Yeah, if your music did overwhelm you, uh, there's another spirit at play. Well, I just didn't know what I was saying, and I was just overwhelmed by the music and everything. Uh, be careful about that. Because you still have control over your own natural spirit. It's when, you know, what do we talk about? Losing your temper. That's one of the fruit of the spirit, temperance. You lose your temper. You lose your spirit. You lose control. Well, that can come in through music. You just read it right there. The, 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 you know what the context is? Tongue speaking and how it's supposed to be done and prophesying and how tongues, okay, you better get somebody to interpret. Why? For the edification of those around you. You want to sing with edification to yourself and to those around you, and you want to sing with understanding. That's your match meet to Psalm 47.7. I want to sing with understanding of what I'm singing. I don't just want to sing it because, oh, it just sounds good and there's a wonderful melody and, oh, there's a great tune behind it. No, I need to know that it's coming from the Spirit of God and the Word of Christ, and it comes out and honors and glorifies the King and my God and it gives thanks to Him. And it does admonish and help us to get ready for what? The preaching. The singing is not the most important thing in this day. It's the preaching of the Word of God. It's the exhortation, admonition, edification, comfort, and all the things that come from the preaching of the Word of God. Uh, I hope you never get away from preaching. I, I, I hope you listen to it, along with listening to good godly music and all that stuff. And Brother Bird, I think, prayed it as well, is that, you know what? Uh, I don't like Smoky Mountain grassy, grassy gra I was going to say grass-fed beef or organic, but, you know, bluegrass, bluegrass, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not, you know, down with that. But some people might like it. If it matches, the, it matches the confines and the attributes of the Word of God, what's the big deal? Now it becomes a preference. I don't like Christian rock because I know what's associated with Christian rock. That's an oxymoron. Brother Johnny, come on in. You're, we're about to get raptured, so you made it just in time, man. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, Christian rock. I'm not going to listen to that because the association it has with, I mean, there was a group called Striper. Does anybody know who Striper is? It's not what you fish for in the ocean. Anybody know what Striper is? And their verse was uh, 50, uh, uh, 53, what, 53, 5, I think it is. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. By his stripes you're healed. Uh, it was 53, 5, 4, 5 of Isaiah. That was their verse. And they're all in yellow and black spandex. What? Don't tell me you guys ain't got that rocking on your iPad, right? Or your iPhone right now. I know you do, man. I heard they're making a comeback. I'm not, this is not a joke, man. This is actually me being real for once. It's a, they're actually, they're like, they're like coming back. 
you know, make another Christian contemporary comeback. I'm like, I, I, I mean, I'm not going to listen to that. I only know that because of the influence I've had before. But, and I would just say, yeah, you got to be real careful about that. But this stuff that's gospel and blues and all that stuff, there's guys I listen to that you guys are, you know, I, are you guys sitting down for this? I like listening to black people sing. <laughs> and like the Manhattan Tabernacle and stuff like that, and the folks can fire it up. Hey, they're black. Hey. Some of you are more saved than you are, man. <laughs> I know we're all saved the same way, but you know what I mean. When it's, there's some of those people who love Jesus Christ way, way more than you do, you bunch of crackers. And they actually sing because they have some heart behind it. I can listen to that. But I've always had an affinity for ham. That's just the way I roll, man. Not ham in the pot, Guido and Kathleen. Uh, ham as the, the... Yeah, man. I'm just saying. I like that. I can listen to that stuff, man. Some folks can't. What are the, what are the, what are the confines of music? Spirit of God. Word of Christ. Does it admonish me? Does it give thanks to my king? Does it give praise to him? Does it exhort me? Does it prepare my heart for what God would have me to do, particularly in, 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 in when we meet together corporately in, in Colossians 3, for the preaching of the word of God? Does it do that for me? It can't, it's not, I mean, it's, it's psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. There are things that fall outside the hymn book. If you can sing them and bring praise to God and meets the confines of the Spirit of God and the Word of Christ and all that, have at it, man. So there, there, is some, there is some freedom in that, but the freedom and the liberty is always underneath the direction of the Word of God and the Spirit of God. Brother Steve, pray for us, please. Yeah, amen. Yep. Amen.